Hi guys, it's Kirsty here uh, on the Milk Crown. Thanks very much for coming back. So we are on season three of the Milk Crown. How amazing. And we are on episode 31. Shocking. I know. Um, so if you're already on, you'll be watching us on YouTube. So you've already got our YouTube. So I'll tell you some of our social medias. So Facebook is Kelly Youth Complex Staff. Twitter is Youth Complex CYC. Instagram is Youth underscore Complex. TikTok is Kelly Youth Complex, and if you want to send us a wee email, um, you can send it to cycyouthteam at gmail.com. So we're so glad that you are kind of watching again. You might notice that I'm kind of missing my right hand man. So Lee's unavailable at the moment, but we we needed to record so we can get our fabulous guests on. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce them once I have told you the kind of low down on the Kirsty versus Lee challenge. So you know the first week I won, obviously. Sister Mary Clarence. Um, and I'm a wee bit disappointed to say that the winner is of the jingle challenge. I'm gutted. I'm gutted. But honestly it was such a good good video he done and great tunes. So next week he'll be singing that. Woohoo! Uh, and this week's challenge is the I'm setting. It's going to be a live challenge. So keep an eye on the Facebook page. Um, because me and Lee tend to do we've been bumping into each other when we're doing a kind of weekly shop after work. Um, so maybe a wee cheeky game of bogeys. <laughs> So I'm excited for that. So we'll keep a wee eye on that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce to you our lovely guests. Let's see them coming in. Hi, guys. Hey. Hi. So we've got these fabulous ladies here helping us out with um, the podcast today. And they're actually there's brains as well as beauty. Yeah, CJ and Mimi will have the uh, brains, but, you know, we noticed that when uh, she was on doing the quiz last time. <laughs> I, I think you have, I bet you, last time. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've kind of briefly mentioned there that you've have, you have got a book, but I don't want to kind of spoil it, and I want you to explain what's been happening and what the deal is. So... Has we tell us the fabulous news? This is a good news story. Well, mm -hmm. uh, Emily, do you want to start with like how we all met? Or how we met? Aye, uh, how we met. Yeah, um, so me and CJ met through Glasgow Youth Council actually, and um, it was actually when we were on a trip to Brussels, which yeah. um, was like it was an amazing experience to be able to go there but it was even better because we ended up sharing a room and we were both quite shy and didn't really know anyone mm -hmm. um I, I knew a few people but I was sort of trying to make sure that I was speaking to people I didn't know as well mm -hmm. and we made friends became friends really quickly and we moved in together like six months after that <laughs> oh that's mad yeah <laughs> you're great in that now I <laughs> <laughs> um, <No comment. laughs> well um obviously they met together like for GIC I met them um when I joined SIP so I joined SIP uh, Scottish Youth Parliament in 2018 and that's that was like a by-election so I came in really new and then um, I was in this team called the Creative Communications Team, and Emily was part of it as well. So she became a convener for that team. So that's how I met her. I kind of talked to her about graphics and how to communicate with the young people. And then through that, um, after the election in March of 2019, um, she introduced me to CJ at a Glasgow um, training day. And we kind of just like became friends through that. And obviously, during that time, um, when the pandemic hit kind of we just kind of got a lot more closer with each other like we became a lot more closer as friends as well amazing amazing so you are all pally from syb so see some of our listeners that might not know cj can you give us a wee bit of background about S what syp is 
Uh, SIP is the Scottish Youth Parliament, which is basically uh, it's it's basically like Scottish Parliament, but for young people. So uh, you know we have representatives for all over Scotland. Uh, Emily represents uh, Glasgow, Kelvin, uh, Victoria. Where do you represent again? I forget. Uh, Motherwell and Wishaw in North Lancashire. Yeah. And then we also have voluntary organisations, which is like uh, stuff like Carers, uh, is it Carers Trust, uh, mm -hmm. you know, F uh, FOSIS, uh, Scouts, and where I represent, which is LGBT of Scotland. And basically our work is just trying to make, you know, the world a bit better place for young people. You know, uh, mm -hmm. we put motions forward for things that we find really sort of passionate about. Like I've done motions in the past about, uh, the over over sexualization of LGBT people and stuff like that and then we just kind of work on it and uh, you know do some work on our motions to try and change the world uh, change the world <laughs> this is change Scotland change the world take over the world <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 so like yeah it's it's, it's it's quite interesting do you want me to add anything to that and... yeah 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 uh, um, the trustee yeah as trustee for uh, oh yeah, so obviously, uh, so the Scottish Youth Parliament is also youth led, so it's youth led by the Board of Trustees and the Conveners Group, which Emily is actually a convener for the Equalities and Human Rights Committee in the Scottish Youth Parliament. Um, so we kind of have everything youth led, everything is made by young people for young people, and we are led by young people. So it's kind of like the only thing about like us that isn't necessary young people is our staff team which are more like trained to be there to like support us and make sure that we are safe that we always kind of have everything there for us and we are supported with whatever we want to do and it's like we kind of make policy and we talk to our MSPs so we're kind of like an organization per se I wouldn't say like necessarily fully like the MSPs but like we're kind of like we're like getting there but like we're just like a charity where like we um we make sure that young people are all like listened to throughout like every end of scotland amazing amazing that is brilliant so it's a wee bit similar to what happens in the youth complex but use are uh, what we would maybe the board of directors at the youth complex would maybe take those ideas and pitch it to our smyp and then they would kind of take it kind of further um, and can I make that change and giving young people a voice, which is absolutely amazing. Um, so uh, we're glad that you're here and we're brilliant. So we know who you are and how you have met. So we're going to go to our first segment and our first segment is what's on my belly? No, no, what's on my belly? That'd be a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> what's on my telly and what's in my belly? So I'll go first. So what's been on my telly is It's a Sin on Channel 4. Have you seen it? I'm, I'm, I started watching the first episode yesterday, uh, but I, I, need to keep, I need to keep watching it. Uh, yes. it's, it's, so, it's good so far. Definitely. Have you watched it? It's on my list. Um, yeah, it's on my list too. Oh, you need to watch it. Watch it but definitely have some tissues at the ready because <laughs> I was crying like a big baby. Crying, crying, crying. That's why I'm not watching it. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like, I'm emotionally <laughs> ready for this. <laughs> oh, it's not amazing. Weird. <laughs> um, <laughs> listeners that don't know what it is, so basically, um, it is these boys that are moving for the kind of like wee small towns, um, all over, and then they're moving into the big city of London. So they're going to go and recreate themselves. Um, so maybe the wee villages or cities that they've came from. Um, aren't as accepting of uh, gay men especially um, so they go to London and they get to kind of live the true life that they want to um, so it's set in 1981 um, so it wasn't actually that long ago to think that um, how the world is completely different so just from generic things like where the have to go to the phone box to use a phone and uh, just like random stuff like that um, and it's kind of the rise of AIDS uh, and how people kind of judged uh, other like how their own community maybe judged themselves um, how some people who were kind of going through that um, and being diagnosed or maybe waiting to be diagnosed were um, harming themselves and then it's about how other people were kind of discriminating and kind of standoffish um, about the whole situation which is really really kind of good timing because this week is National HIV Testing Week. Did you know that? 
So it's amazing. I didn't Mm-hmm. So if you're on Instagram, you should follow the Pink Palace, um, and that's the name of like the the what do you call it the like see where they these three guys move in with these other people that they meet. Uh-huh. Um, they call like their flat the Pink Palace, um, and they become like the best of pals. So there's an Instagram page called the Pink Palace, and there's lots and lots of help pages linked directly. So if you're going to watch it, maybe download um follow the Instagram page and you can kind of link in with some of the stuff. Obviously, lots of it's based mm-hmm. on two facts as well because um, this was a, a true crisis and lots of kind of um, the LGBT community were totally discriminated against, um, but also there was no information whatsoever mm-hmm. out there. So now we are very lucky to have like the internet and ha- um, have all these resources like at our fingertips. Um, so definitely, and it's kind of opened up lots of conversations and some of like my friendship groups or uh, and work and things like that. I'm like, oh my God, did you see this? And did you see this part? And um, so I'm not spoil it too much for you since you're going to watch it, but it is amazing. And if anything, it just kind of highlights how the power of being kind like how much that can do to somebody like Mm -hmm. the difference of just taking a wee bit of time for somebody might make no sense right now but when you watch it that will make sense (laughs) (laughs) so that's what's been on my telly and I've been loving it Uh, I binge watched that Um, so what's in my belly so been seeing everywhere everybody like kind of baking and stuff like that and CJ, you know I can't cook. I can't bake. I can't do much. So I was like, ah, right. There's an easy step to make fudge. It's on Pinterest. I was like, ah, that looks dynamite. Let's get a bash. So <laughs> condensed, condensed milk. Are we can are we tin of condensed milk and a Terry's chocolate orange? How's that? That's pretty easy. <laughs> That is pure easy. Like, fine. There was a microwavable meal, a like ven- uh, version of it, and I was at, like, right, okay. So I tried to melt the chocolate first to make it easy to mix, and then I, I burnt the chocolate, and then my house was stinking. <laughs> <laughs> no files, no files though. So that's good. That's an improvement. Um, so I ended up making it on the like on the hob, um, which actually was so much easier. I don't know why I just didn't do that in the first place. Um, and you didn't need to melt the chocolate orange before it because it was already hot. Like I don't know what was going on in my head. Like I was just was the angry state. So condensed milk and like the sweetened one, and then terrace chocolate orange, all mixed in, and it's starting to go like a wee bit kind of. Um, like sticky almost. And I'm like, ah, right, okay, that's fine. So I put it on a tray and then I had like the wee orange segments. You know, you can get like a wee bag, like um, the Whisper Treats or something. You can get wee segments. So I put that out and I thought, oh, check me, pure bougie, making it look all nice and fancy. I, on the recipe, it says put it on brown paper first because it gets stuck to the tray. <laughs> oh, no. You, you shouldn't you shouldn't be allowed to cook ever. <laughs> you don't allow me cook. Oh man. So I put it in the freezer and I was like, yes, this is brilliant. Gotta be pure good, gotta chop it up and everything like that. Could get it out of the ring. <laughs> so I had to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many times I had like a spoon and I did I did that. <laughs> But do you know what? See if I had brown paper, that would have been absolutely dynamite because I loved it. Um, yeah, that was uh, a good couple of days ago when the tin's still soaking, you know, <laughs> trying to get the fudge off it. So. Emily, this is where I get my lack of being able to cook from. <laughs> <laughs> All you can explain now. <laughs> so that is definitely, that's what's been on my telly and in my belly and in my kitchen and on my roof and in my face and everything. <laughs> so, Emily, do you want to go first and tell us what's on your telly and what's in your belly? 
Sure. Um, so I've been watching both seasons of Drag Race, RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, the UK one I'm especially invested in. Oh, yes. 100%. Yeah. Which I'm using the Scottish Queens. I love them both. So Ellie Diamond is actually from Dundee and that's where I'm from. Oh, really? So, um, everyone knows about Ellie. Like ev- everyone knows them. And um, he actually went to my school. Oh my God, Clive <laughs> I know. <Famous>. <laughs> exactly. Um, I ha- unfortunately, I didn't, um, didn't know him. So I can't really like just him up and be like, hey, can I get free tickets to your show? <laughs> I get, I get oh. yeah, your show when it hangs our back up. <laughs> Don't want to be that person. Um, I'm, I'm loving the UK series, especially this time. It's so good. And um, the Glasgow Queen as well. Um, forgot. Um, Lawrence Cheney. Lawrence, yeah. Lawrence Cheney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence Cheney sounds, do you know, like when RuPaul says um, his name, RuPaul sounds like Jane Godley. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Overly oh. Scottish, like Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Who do you think's going to win? And I'm just, win? I'm just rooting for one of the Scottish queens to win. To yeah. be honest, yes. Bring it home. Bring it yeah. home. Definitely. We definitely got done dirty last season when they didn't get a single Scottish queen. I know. I was raging last season, but I did like last season. I loved them. Um, what's her name? Bag of chips. Oh yeah. <laughs> I wish I had like a tagline like that. Like I probably do, but like don't realise I do it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's been in your belly? Well, um, this year at Christmas, I got given the responsibility of making the soup for starters for Christmas dinner, um, which I was so nervous about because my family um, can be judgy. <laughs> um, my wee brother is very picky as well, so I knew he wasn't going to eat it, but he did try it. Well, um, yeah, it was a red lentil um, and basically every vegetable we had in the fridge type soup. <laughs> <laughs> that's good was it nice was it spicy or was it my I, I think it was good I mean no one complained and no one got ill so that's <laughs> I think that's a win <laughs> oh that's good that's really really good so are you gonna experiment with a couple more recipes the soup recipes for that I have been getting into cooking a wee bit more like during lockdowns um I've been making a lot of like vegetable curries and stuff because I'm trying to cut down on meat a wee bit and that's quite good because they're really easy you can find recipes online so easily just quick google and you've got a pretty decent recipe True. well if you find something good and easy and you think that I won't burn the house down <laughs> send it to me or even better do you know what you just come back onto the podcast and we'll do like a ready steady cook type thing <laughs> And then, like, you can cook for us, but, like, pre-post it to me, and then I'll eat it whilst you are cooking it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the room this morning, but I should show now. <laughs> 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 right, thanks very much, Emily. So, Victoria, can you tell us what's in your belly and what's on your telly? Um, yeah, so, um, what I've watched recently was um so i've never watched this show before but basically i've watched once upon a time um it took me a year to watch it and and like not gonna lie i like i can get into a habit where like i'm like oh i'm not gonna like it i'm not gonna like it i'm not gonna like it and then i watch it and all of a sudden like i'm obsessed with it like i have like measure all over my room with it and i'm just like oh what have i done um <laughs> yes. like it's 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 a bad habit like like you could probably tell like disney everything else in the background of my room but um so basically it kind of follows this like main character called emma swan and she kind of um basically her son uh, tries to like make her, her believe about the fact that her parents are Snow White and Prince Charming and like there's all like the there's this like town called Storybrook and like all the characters in Storybrook are characters from different like fairy tales but like they don't know that they are because they were like cursed by like this evil queen so okay. he's trying to like tell her hey like this those are your parents even though her parents don't even know that they, her, that they are her parents and it's kind of like this like whole cycle of different characters coming in and out and like you can recognize them because like lots of them are like called bell for example there's a character called bell so it's like it's kind of based on like disney like and mm-hmm. there's peter pan but like 
with this they kind of like kind of twist and turn different stories because for example the bell's beast is also rumple silskin and is also the crocodile from pure pan and so it's like, like all interlinked yeah it's oh, like all interlinked. Like, that sounds this, cool i like just, how disney kind of does that with like um kind of lots of that even like just with a generic kind of films when you see like what was it uh was it the end that tangled yeah like, there was something where it was like <laughs> frozen and then there was there's different things like that are all linked mm-hmm. i love how that's like so thought through with them all and how that interlinks so that these are all the kids of these like princesses and princes and stuff some are some, the, some yeah, are some, the actual characters yeah they are at the actual characters so like for example there was this one episode which i still laugh about because they really much like made a joke of themselves because there's this episode where like so ruffle silkin is like the husband of bell but he used to have an ex-wife which he had a son with and the son used to go out with the main character and they had a son which is the like henry who's like trying to get her to believe however it's really Ruffle Stilskin's, Ruffle Stilskin's ex-wife left him for Captain Hook and Captain Hook falls in love with the main character Emma Swan so she sits there and she's like so you've been in love with my son and my ex-lover and then I'm just like oh she just oh summed God, it up that's like shameless but like Disney version <laughs> literally it's, it's oh. just like so many things that going on but yeah um, I would like kind of rate it like maybe probably like Eight out of ten, or nine out of ten. It definitely it sounds good, but it sounds like one that I'd maybe need to, like, no, I like to watch certain programs before I go to bed, and that, like you know when you just don't want to think. I feel as if I need to think to watch that one, so I would watch that one during the day. That's mm-hmm. definitely a good one. Okay, mm-hmm. so what's been in your belly? Um. So recently, like maybe at the like the first lockdown, I I've never really got into cooking before because it's usually just my dad doing the thing or my sister's doing the thing but like um so I decided to be like you know what I'm gonna make something and then I decided to make brownies um and obviously like I wasn't gonna do them from scratch because like there's no experience behind my back so I just got a box of like and did that but basically yeah. um like during the whole process well they came out really well and even though my dad's trying to like deny the fact that it <laughs> really well but like during the whole process my sister was in the room with me talking to her ex-boyfriend and I was just here struggling like my hands were like full of like the dough itself like I was trying like I literally kind of at one point I just went for like a, a tatty masher and just like you know what I'm mashing it with this like I can't move it with my hands my sister was just watching me and I was like could you like take pictures of me doing this and she's like okay so she took my phone and she was taking pictures she's like what are you doing I'm like oh I'm just making brownies she's like are you sure <laughs> like is, is that really how you make brownies I'm like yes but so then, it, it, then it looks like a brownie at the end does not matter the process exactly exactly does it happen tatty masher or no tatty masher it is did it exactly. taste good that they, they don't even have to look good they can look all right yeah I mean they looked like they looked okay like I I made a mistake because they looked fine like as a, like when I baked them like they were like oh I could just cut them into pieces and that's fine but I was like no you know what no 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 I'm gonna be extra so I bought <laughs> so I bought <laughs> chocolate and I melted the chocolate and I decided to pour it on top of the brownies but it looked not the greatest because the, <laughs> the chocolate was lighter than the brownies and it just looked really terrible and I was like oh that does not look tasty at all like oh. and I just waited for it to just like please just like go darker please just go darker and it did at some point but I was like oh my sister was like I'm not eating that <laughs> like it's probably poisoned I'm like well <laughs> so what would you rate your brownies at a 10 then um taste wise I'd say 8 out of 10 look wise 4 out of 10 <laughs> <laughs> it's not really matters though isn't it no yeah. definitely definitely right cj you hit us with what's on your telly and what's in your belly uh i've been recently watching euphoria on uh, it's on sky atlantic and on now tv and basically the follows the story of uh, a drug addict called rue who's played by zendaya and she's basically just came out of rehab after having after ODing. 
so she spent the whole summer at rehab and she comes back uh, and it's about her trying to like uh, you know stay sober and make sure that she is off the drugs and then she also meets someone who becomes like our greatest friend and maybe even more mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> uh, called Jules and uh, Jules is a trans woman uh, and it's just it's just about ma- mainly about those two and you know about uh, Jules trying to uh, you know continue her transition while she's getting all this hate and about Zendaya's character Rue you know trying to get sober while they're also like surviving in high school and then there's all these side characters and they're all living through it. It's really, really well done. Like the cameras, the you know how when you take a photo on a Polaroid and it just kinda has this weird look to it where everything is kind of dark behind you and then it's like yeah, I... so a lot of the camera mm-hmm. angles look like that during like party scenes mm-hmm. and that and it just looks so cool and it's like the way it's shot it's amazing. You can tell your photography background's coming back at this age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's such a great show. Like I've been People have been telling me to watch it for years, but uh, I, I finally watched it last week and I just watched every episode. <laughs> like, How um, many episodes is it? Are there like series? I think it's only season one just now, but I think there's eight episodes. And yeah. because it got ep- the second season got uh, like really badly delayed, like it won't be out until late, ne- late this year or early next year, that they've done two specials for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, they filmed during the pandemic. Uh, so yeah, it's it's really good so far and I definitely recommend it. Okay. Uh, what would you score it at a pen? Nine and a half. Oh, that's a good one. Right, so we've got an eight, we've got a nine and a half and did you, Emily, did you rate RuPaul? Ten out of ten, always. Uh, always. <laughs> <laughs> like, we know, we know what it is, but I, oh, this is good, this is like a good week conveyor belt of options, yeah. right, okay. Yeah. So Siege, what's in your belly? I've been trying, you know, if you've seen those, like, it's on TikTok of, like, people getting, like, uh, pe- uh, fajitas. Like, uh, yeah, the wraps. And you, like, mm-hmm. cut it down the middle. And then what I've been doing is I used to make these on paninis, but uh, I've been doing it that way. I put uh, corn chicken uh, and then you fold it over. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, fold, you put corn chicken on a quarter of it, you fold it over. Then I put cheese on it fold it over and I put like barbecue sauce on it, fold it over and then you stick it like in a like grill, you know, mm-hmm. you know, George Foreman type thing. Uh, and that sounds actually really good. beautiful. I don't I don't know why it's like so it's so much better than like, you know, doing it. I, I I feel as if it's because it doesn't fall out. Like you yeah. don't spend the full time eating it off your chest. <laughs> <laughs> definitely oh that's good I think I might need to give that a try I've not really I've had like corn chitting in stuff so like in sauces like so like like in a curry or in um I had it in soup before as well um but I've never had it like just itself but I suppose if you've got the barbecue sauce and the cheese yeah I I think everything on but the texture of it's definitely different isn't it yeah, I think the texture is the biggest thing. Uh, mm-hmm. But like it, most you know, most of them does taste different. But most of the things you make with chicken and stuff like that, you get the flavour from the sauce, not the actual chicken itself. So yeah. like when you're making chicken curry, or you know, like uh, when you're make, using the mince to make like uh, like mince and totties, all the, the flavouring comes from like you know the, the curry sauce and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. like it tastes absolutely the same. Uh, it's just the kind of extras into them. Yeah. That's why when people say, like, mm, it tastes like chicken, because everything tastes like chicken, because it's just whatever you have, way chicken. <laughs> like, yeah. that is it, basically. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay, well, this was, that was good. Lots of good recommendations for our viewers, and, and making me a wee tad hungry, because I haven't had my dinner yet, so I'm like, mm, what will I have? So what we'll do is we'll go into our wee questions. So we've already got to know how you know each other. Um... Uh, a wee bit of your background so yes I've got a book out uh, it's out now is that no, right it's coming out soon coming out soon right coming out soon right and it's so CJ do you want to tell us a wee bit about where what the name of the book is and where the idea came from so the book is called what makes a family and it started off I just felt you know in lockdown you come up with some ideas uh, I've tried to learn how to play the ukulele and stuff like that. Like, you just, so I decided I wanted to try writing a kid's book. Like, uh, I thought, 
I just thought may as well, and I thought that there was not I've not seen a lot of LGBT kids books, so I was that was my main focus at first was I want to write this LGBT one, uh, and then I sort of spoke to Emily about it, and we sort of started you know discussing about like the the ideas that we could come up with, and uh, Emily, do you want to? Um, yeah, so um, initially it was obviously CJ had the idea to write one that um, sort of normalised LGBT um, and the community to kids. But um, when we were discussing it, we sort of came up with the idea of making it more broad than that and including lots of different types of families because there's lots of groups of people in society who don't get that sort of recognition and, you know, the, the a lot of the stigma that comes with you know young carers or um families with two mums or two dads like all, all of all of these different groups a lot of the stigma starts from just ignorance and not knowing about it and you know kids will make fun of what they're afraid of or they don't know and they're unfamiliar with so the idea behind the book was to normalize um these different types of families um, families with single parents as well as included. We've got, uh, I think we've got a dad with a prosthetic wing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there, there's all these different things, and um, our hope is that it will not only raise money for LGBT Scotland, um, which is obviously an amazing organisation, we want to be able to raise funds for them um, over LGBT History Month, but also. Um, the aim is to sort of normalise that for kids and my my mum's a childminder, well she used to be a childminder anyway, so um, I'm quite familiar with kids books, I used to sit and read the kids um, stories like after school and stuff like that, um, so sort of tried to use that when I was going through the editing and stuff like that. Definitely. So me and CJ actually used to work in libraries as well and I just remember there being like very little like and variety of books there was um a woman that came in and she was white and her children were black and the difficulty in trying to find a book for her a uh, kind of like her, her son was getting bullied at school um about having a white mum and it was just these conversations and how she was like look this is how you can relate to it and this is what you should do and this is how you respond to that there was one book and I was like, that's, and we were in quite a diverse community um, where I was at the time. And I was like, that's just not okay because obviously that lady took that book out, but I was looking on the system to see if there was any more copies or if there was any other varieties to be like, oh, we can order that in or whatever. There wasn't anything like as explicit. And I remember when I was at, um, I did like a placement when I was at school in a nursery because I thought I wanted to be a nursery teacher and then I realised that you need to change nappies. Um, <laughs> so, but I remember there being like um, lots of kind of diverse dolls and things like that and I was like, this is amazing that this um, is available. Obviously there wasn't as many kind of colour ranges or kind of there was all, obviously wasn't any um, kind of, uh, what do you call it? adapted limbs or anything like that on any of the any of them but it was that it was a step in the right kind of yeah. direction so that was when mm -hmm. I was in fourth year at school do you know what I mean so obviously things have progressed from them um but I just remember being like this this something else needs to be available because if you're trying to educate your children to be informed and not ignorant how can you do that if there's no resources if we don't mm -hmm. equip people with the knowledge you can I all right you can go and like look up a website or whatever like that but that's no that's no normal it's like homework almost it should be enjoyment so yeah. when CJ had says that um you were making a book I was like oh my god yes like <laughs> buzz in <laughs> um so I it's brilliant so can you tell us a wee bit um about what each of your roles in the book uh, yeah, well, I, well, I, uh, as I said, I, I sort of came up with like the general idea, and then mm -hmm. you know I had talked to uh, you know I'm I'm not the best of writing. I'm dyslexic, obviously, as you know, cross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I know that if I was going to make it as professional as I could, then I would need 
a lot of help. <laughs> so Emily is a very talented writer. Uh, see some of the like poems that she's wrote and stuff like that. Uh, you know, one of them got posted recently on is it the National National Scottish Gallery. Is that what it is? National Gallery Scotland. That no. uh, <laughs> on my Instagram, and it is really uh, sorry. That was the most dyslexic thing you've done. <laughs> <laughs> you just mixed up the name yeah. of it by just saying it. <laughs> yeah, so she, she, you know, I could post to Instagram, and then obviously she, she also studies English at uh, uni. So like, I knew that if I wanted anyone to edit my book and make it not just legible but also great, then uh, Emily would be the sort of best person. And then mm -hmm. also with, uh, you know, Victoria. Victoria, uh, I've known since starting SYP as a talented. Uh, illustrator as you can see with the she has a canvas behind her uh, which is like one of her drawings <laughs> uh, no way. did you do that yeah <laughs> skill man let's bring it in closer <laughs> uh, but yeah so like I know that like I'll, I know that like sort of Victoria would be the one that, to illustrate sort of my book and uh, <gasps> wow that is skill that... wait did you post that CJ yeah yeah I was like, I recognise that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so like, you know, we also had those roles and you just can speak about more in a minute, but what also we also like, we used our own sort of, because we all have individual experiences to, mm -hmm. you know, if, you know, as being an LGBT person, I was sort of, you know, said what would like, it'd be like if like, you know, I had LGBT parents or for people who, you know, uh, it's Victoria uh, has single dad so like she used that experience to help me with you know the single dad part of the book so we each you know sort of got our own experiences as well as reaching out to people that we knew who were like care experienced to get their experiences mm -hmm. uh, Amazing. that is so good because there'll be so many people that can relate and I feel like that um it's this is like I don't know if you've, you've seen like kind of motivational quotes and all that are there and they're like oh and they make your day but there's the one that um that's saying be the person that your younger self wants you like wanted yeah. you to be yeah like use our 110 percent doing that use mm -hmm. our being like like Victoria as you're saying about having a single dad like you are being that person that makes that normal and makes that acceptable and mm -hmm. CJ like if you have children or for when it being acceptable for you to kind of understand that or like if sometimes it needs to be an adult that kind of kind of gives the nod for a child to know it's acceptable yeah almost and use of like as young adults have went and done that and made that like accessible realistic and just like mm -hmm. just touchable like tangible do you know what I mean like it's at the end of your fingertips um which hats off to you yeah. Uh, Victoria, do you want to speak a bit more about like illustrating the book? Yeah. Um, so actually, now that you said all oh, uh, on your fingertips, actually, so basically, um, I illustrated the whole um, book while uh, doing di it digitally, but also just sketching out. So I actually did digitalize the whole book using my like fingers because I don't have a pen for it. So like, it's kind of like, um, I always draw like that. It's kind of <laughs> strange, but basically, um I remember uh talking to CJ once and I said oh I just illustrated this book for like this one person because they wanted to have a Christmas story that their grand used to tell her but like in a physical copy so I kind of illustrated that in like November time so I said to CJ hey like you know I wanted to like kind of just illustrate something else like a kid's book because that, that would be easy kind of thing and she just like remember how you told me <laughs> that you want to illustrate a kid's book I'm like yes why and then she was like oh because I have this idea and what do you think and I was just like hell yes I am in so um basically okay we kind of like laid out the whole like idea of different parents and I kind of talked about my um, my experience of having just that and then I talked about experience of being a young carer because that's also kind of gets pushed back um, and then we kind of like added different characters shaped them in a way that um, it makes sense for example uh, one of the designs um, of like the dads like for our lions so lions usually you can tell which one is male which one's female so um, basically the whole 
design is animals. Okay, so not people. Yeah, yeah not people. It's animals. <laughs> so it's all animals. So that's said and that. Normally, if it was a, a dad, you'd be able to obviously tell by like the kind of shape and stuff like yeah. that. I probably should have specified that when I said prosthetic, prosthetic wing. <laughs> yeah, I think I go with that. I... <laughs> yeah, they're all different kinds of animals. But it also teaches kids about animals as well in a way because like yeah. most kids books do have elements of that because it yeah. teaches like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Spe- like just basic word recognition um, for different animals. So that's really good that we've got that in there as well. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt. That's you. fine. Um, I, like, so originally, obviously, like, when CJ was kind of giving me all the ideas and I was like taking them down, I was like, okay, we could do this instead of this. And obviously CJ probably had a different idea from me. So yeah. when, so she imagined more like normal animals and I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna humanize those. <laughs> so like technically they're kind of like chibi kind of animals. Like they have like clothes on and glasses, whatever. So like I kind of designed them for that. So basically um, he are- like- yeah, yeah, because mm-hmm. my idea at first, when I first thought of the idea in my head, it was realistic animals, like them being actual animals. But then when Victoria drew me the, I think it was, I can't remember if it's the front cover or if it's just a drawing of like uh, the, mm-hmm. the the two main characters. But and the, I'll show you. This is the this is the front cover. If it can actually see it, uh, oh, so yeah, it's like yeah. more more sort of like yeah, yes. uh-huh. really chubby mm-hmm. and. It was, and I was like, I, I, that wasn't what I had in my head, but it is better than what yes. I had in my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's, so, that's the kind of joy of like mm-hmm. collaborating and working together, isn't it? Yeah, and I kind of like, um, I've kind of hidden, like, obviously I usually draw from like experience because I need to have references or I need to have experience of drawing something. And I've never drawn animals before. I usually draw like humans. So it was kind of not only I was like Googling on Pinterest, okay, how does this animal look like? Even though I know how it looks like, I just needed to like <laughs> reference it. Um, and I remember like, I like to hide things like Easter eggs into my drawings. And when you see them, you can like, maybe you can recognize something. Maybe I have to point out to you, but basically throughout like the whole thing, for example, throughout the pages, you can see that it gets like the gets darker because the sky goes from blue to like sunset to dark so it's kind of like you can tell that it's like getting darker like that or um so there's a cat family as well so um they are supposed to be the mixed raised family so um it's a ginger cat and a brown cat and they make i'm not sure what the name of the breed is that they make (laughs) partial yes um that one and basically they their house so i designed all the, well most of the houses that you see in the pages by ha- what the animal is so i designed the cat's house like a scratching post but basically because i have cats at home they have a scratching post so i sat down on the floor and i looked at my scratching post and i started sketching my scratching post like i'm like okay the colors there's a thing like i always look at the scratching post so i had to like sit down with it and then um <laughs> It's funny because like my friends are like they're like oh okay because the lion <laughs> so the lion designs uh, they were both dads and they have they have a son. Um, I took an idea from our two friends from the social group parliament, uh, Jack and Liam, because we kind of have this like thing where like they're the dads because like they they act and are kind of like like dads basically. Yeah, um, so dads of the I. Yeah, so I took their like the designs of how they're clothed by how Liam and Jack are clothed, and their ch- and their child. Um, I didn't realize that, but like the child kind of reminds me of another person uh, who's um he's also the Pamela Scotty farmer, and his name is Josh. And like the way I designed their son, it looks like him, and it kind of like it makes me laugh every time I look at it because like now I just Is cannot unsee it. A legitimate love child. Yes. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm gonna hate that we're saying this on here. <laughs> I mean, like they yeah, like might as well the world might know. Um, but yeah, so it's like I just kind of I don't know. I just had fun with it. Like I just kind of I had to like um go to my friends because she has a six year old um sister, and I was like, okay, give me all her books. Like I need to look at the design. And she's like, okay. So like I sat down with like kids books. Her mom walks past me like, what are you doing? And I'm like, no, <laughs> just research. <laughs> like just I was like, I don't know how to do it. So usually when I do drawings, I 
like out, out, like I have this outline all around them because they kind of they resemble like my style is a bit more like anime a bit and then Disney anime mixed. However, for this, I wanted it to be soft. I wanted it to be for kids. So um, I decided to do it without the outline, but that me meant that like every page I've done, I had to do like redraw everything because usually when I do like outlines like this, um, I just kind of like do the outline and then I can drop the color and then fix up mm -hmm. any mistakes. Yeah. But with this, I had to put the sketch into the like my iPad and then like just scratch around everything and then put so many layers and then so many layers of for shading and so many layers for like adding eyes and adding like details and you made and, a like, lot of yourself yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's I think we're all quite skilled at, I think. <laughs> yeah. making things well, harder for ourselves I definitely that honestly mm. sounds amazing I'm just loving this like the sheer talent of every one of you is like just kind of you can see he's up your buzzing about it and I'm like <laughs> buzzing for you it's like yes like this has became a thing it's always been something like one of my dreams is to have my name on a book like mm -hmm. I mean I've always wanted to write a book and did I'm you mention mentions us a lot on books <laughs> <laughs> yeah I like I've honestly it's something I've been wanting since I was probably about five um <laughs> which is it's quite funny that the first one is a kid's book <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um yeah so the editing process was like it's probably the most boring part of it in, in terms of like what people would think but there was a lot of um there was a lot of fun parts to it and like getting to see like it going from the early manuscript that CJ gave me to what it is now is just really, really exciting. And um, like there was quite a few bits where like I would add in like a sentence or two, I'd add in a sentence describing sort of the setting um, so that it was more audio and, well not audio, but um, like visual textual and, and, textual and visual. Um, and yeah, so I really, I really like doing that. And then there's also little things in the language as well that aims to make the book more inclusive so um like the main character riley um goes by they pronouns and it's basically so that um to normalize sort of non-binary but also um to make sure that that character is actually applicable to any little kid that reads the book yes. so anyone could see themselves in that character because they're not gendered yep mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's amazing and to just even like even if you identify as a specific gender as a child reading that book then growing up and maybe realizing that you weren't that gender there's a kind of kind of stability of like that character is still there like yes. you know mm -hmm. what I mean like you can mm -hmm. still relate to it um definitely so how did the idea and your pictures and all that how did that become like how did that come together and it become an actual thing like it became a book well you know we we started talking about it I think in probably November is or early December and I'd thought of it as just put it let's put it together and we can put it on you know Amazon have a publish on demand thing where you 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 know you buy a book and then they'll publish it for you and send it and then you get like a small cut so I was like we could do it that way uh, and then we saw on, you know, SYP uh, has this thing that comes out, I think it's every Sunday and it's like, it's called SYP News and it's just basically a newsletter of all these different things happening in the organisation but also outside of it. And I saw this thing called the Time to Shine Fund, which is a fund for young people. Uh, I think it's run by uh, National Youth Arts Advisory Group, Creative Scotland and Young Scott. And basically it's, it trying to helps to fund young people's uh, in terms of the arts so like you know mm -hmm. short movies or uh, you know uh, f you know photography uh, exhibits and stuff like that. it just helps uh, you know sort of fund anything like that so I saw that and I looked on it and the uh, sort of closing date was that day that, that I got it so I was like <laughs> right I need to do this so I just spent that whole day like applying for that you know for this funding you know I had to like con phone people to you know get references and stuff like that and you know we applied to for the funding but we all sort of just assumed that it was like we'll, we'll try mm -hmm. but we won't get it like mm -hmm. you know it's just very you know hard to sort it'll be hard to like get the funding so we just 
no, I, I done that and I actually thought that I missed the deadline because email confirmation I got said the deadline is the future one. So I thought I missed it and I was like, ah, oh, it doesn't matter then, we'll just date the other way. And then I think it was, I think it may have been just before Christmas, I got an email saying that we got the funding <gasps> and it was, it was like, I, I couldn't even explain it. I was like so excited because I was like, we can do so much more. We, you know, we can buy an official, you know, ISBN for the book, which is like the number that's on the back of a book mm-hmm. that makes it official. You know, we can actually print them off ourselves and sell them on Etsy. And that way that we get a bit more uh, money that we can donate to, you know, LGBT of Scotland. And it just gives us a lot more, you know, sort of freedoms. And uh, it was, it's mind blown that, 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 that we mm-hmm. actually, you know, sort of, uh, that we got this funding and you know had to keep it secret for <laughs> sort of a long time until it was announced just you know not the other day and to see it like get announced and to see people's reactions to it so many people when where can I buy it you know mm-hmm. like it was it's mm-hmm. it's mind-blowing like it's getting a bit it's getting a bit real and it's a bit scary yeah, uh, that's amazing mm-hmm. so see the funding if you don't mind me asking is that open to anybody to apply for like so say we've got a young person listening just now and maybe a group of their friends have been working on like maybe a project with, within the arts and they would like to apply is there more information on that yeah uh, if you go to uh, either young scott or creative scotland's website and you look for the time to shine fund or the nurturing talent fund uh, it's open i'm just got it here it's op- it's uh, open to 12, uh, 11 to 25 year olds and it's to develop their chosen mediums, passions and talents. These include short filmmaking, recording songs in professional studios, producing music videos, attending master classes, etc. And they have the funding, like I think runs out every couple of months. So like they'll, uh, there'll be a cut off of a certain date. So you apply for that date and you might get the funding that's accessed for that you know period of time and but if you miss it there's always the next one yeah but yeah it's it's really good and you know mm-hmm. it's quite easy to apply for you you do is need there a, stuff like that. is there a specific amount that so like um like lots of young people have applied to like youth bank before and you can apply for up to 500 pounds um mm-hmm. for like a kind of group initiative um so is there a certain amount of money or do you just there, put down there is but i can't find it right now uh I think it's, I think it might be a thousand pound that you can apply for. Yeah. So it's quite a good amount of money. Yeah. Uh, and can you apply as an individual or do you need to be part of a group? Yeah, you can, can apply, apply as an individual, individual or as a group. There's some people who have been funded along with us that get funded for, you know, for just them uh, doing their own photography thing mm-hmm. and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah, you can apply for it. That's amazing because you don't often get that. You don't, like, there isn't always opportunities that have that great amount of money as well um, mm-hmm. for things to actually like follow through and yeah. to become something rather than it just being kind of the starting of use... something and then you need to fund it yourself or you need to sustain it yourself yeah. um, and also, the fact that um, you can do it yourself is amazing. Yeah also with us like we obviously we are doing it to fund LGBT of Scotland but there's nowhere in the fund that it says you have to like have an end goal like you don't have to like uh you know, do anything with your project. It could be if you want to create a music video just so you have a music video out there, you can apply for that too. Mm-hmm. If we wanted to, you know, apply for the funding so we could get a book to make us money, we could have done that. But, you, you know, mm-hmm. uh, so it's yeah. kind of open to like anything arts based. I think yeah. it's really, oh, sorry. Um, I was just going to say, I think it's really incredible that like this is a thing right now especially like this kind of funding is available to young people because um, obviously right now with COVID it's really tough on every sort of aspect every um, every industry that's artistic every arts industry is suffering at the moment and so it's really incredible that this kind of fund exists because it means that you know young people can still pursue their passions even though they're getting um, told the media they're getting told by um people around them potentially potentially society um potentially their friends that it's not a viable career path but actually it really is and it's so important that funding like this exists because it'll give young people the confidence and the means to actually pursue their dreams and you know obviously we did this to raise money and it's it's amazing that we're doing that and i'm i'm so happy that we're donating the money but it's really good that it means you know young people can use it to um advance their career and it and also profit themselves if, if they if that's what they want to do with it 
that is so good. So where where can we access it? Um, so, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, um, it's got. Uh, so we're going to put it on Etsy, um, and I'm pr I'm pretty sure we're going to like share the link to the Etsy page or. Okay. Yeah, I'll 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 send the 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 sort of the link to you, uh, mm -hmm. but it'll be like we'll all be sharing it on our social media. You know, try to get as many yeah. people mm -hmm. to buy it as we can. And how much is it? Well, we haven't a hundred percent thought of this because we we have to make sure that the uh, you know you know the cost the cost yeah. of like producing mm -hmm. it and you know making sure that we have enough money. I think it should be around seven pound, eight pound, mm -hmm. uh, okay. and we also. We actually get asked recently about from one of our uh, friends who is uh, uh, sight impaired uh, that if there was an audiobook version, so we're actually working on that as well. That if you donate, mm -hmm. you can get the audiobook version as well as oh, the actual book. That's uh, so cool. Yeah. Oh, that's mm -hmm. amazing. That is amazing. That's honestly just made my day as well because <laughs> as a dyslexic, um, <laughs> knowing how difficult it is, but being able to maybe if there's a dyslexic parent being able to have the mm. audio book as well as looking at the pictures as well as following it along could still be seeing it as well but like the audio book could be still just going along there and having that time it makes it even more inclusive which is just mm. amazing so hats off to you and a big round of applause and I can't wait to get my own copy um definitely and I can't wait for you to make more Definitely, I hope this isn't the last. I hope he's make more, and I hope he's develop maybe uh, a sequel or a teen version. Um, so depends. Does the the lion grow up? And <laughs> like, do you follow Josh? <laughs> Is he teen just style? <laughs> So definitely that is amazing. So um CJ, you just passed me the details. As soon as it's available, we'll put it in all our social medias for all our listeners um to kind of uh, get access to it. So now it's time for the quiz. So as I'm on myself, obviously I can't take part in the quiz because I made the quiz. Um, so CJ is going to be an honorary Milk Round member. Um, so CJ, you better win. <laughs> um, and then Victoria and Emily, we're going up against you. So what I'm going to do oh, is not much I, I'm going to go for a question per person. Um, if that person gets it wrong, like so say if I talk and say, uh, say to CJ, this is your question. CJ doesn't know the answer. I will count to three and let Victoria or Emily like buzz in almost um, with the answer. So you need to make your noise first uh, to buzz in. So this is going to be whole. I am really bad with like common knowledge stuff. So like I'm just gonna be like, what did you say? <laughs> also, right. like I think I'm gonna like lose Good. my because like, I'm like bilingual. So like my like like my first language is Polish. So like I'm just gonna be like. Wait, what? <laughs> like, my English is going to leave me. <laughs> she's, trying, she's trying to, like, can I cover a button? She, like, basically, that is what's happening. I'm, but you I'm, I'm, remember, like, you're up against CJ. <laughs> Wait, do we need to come up with a buzzer, did you say? Yes. Right, mine oh. says, boop. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Of course that is. Right, Emily, what's your buzzer noise? I'll go with beep. <laughs> right. And Victoria? I'll just, I'll just be like, me. <laughs> me. <laughs> me. <laughs> right, okay, so I'll give you, I'll direct the question uh, to you. Um, so it's based on Netflix, by the way. Oh. So it is. So have you all got Netflix? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely <laughs> skiving on somebody else's Netflix. <laughs> skiving on CJ. <laughs> Right, okay, so first person, let's go for Victoria, right? Oh, no. So they used to listen in case she's wanting to steal. Oh, wait, I need to take the... So we'll tell if she doesn't know or gets it wrong. It's going to be harder than I thought, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love how I'm getting put on the spot when I just... <laughs> like. <laughs> right, okay, question one. How much does a standard monthly subscription cost in the UK for Netflix? Um, seven ninety nine. Uh -uh. 
Right, you still can beep in? Beep. Oh, right, Emily? Uh, 9.99. No. No. <laughs> Boop. Right, CJ? Uh, 8.99. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I don't pay for my own Netflix. This is yes, a Netflix. Netflix. <laughs> Who's jumped on somebody's login? <laughs> it's just my mum's. <laughs> I used to pay for Netflix. That's so embarrassing. <laughs> it did go up though. Um, I thought it was seven ninety nine before. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah definitely. Then it went up. I... Right. So Emily, you're next. So what is the name of the school where sex education is set? Oh no. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I've seen that show so many times, but I'm terrible at remembering names. And you want to pass? Yeah. Right, okay, CJ and Victoria, it's up to you. Uh, oh my God, this is got so, I can't, I feel so ashamed, I don't know this. Uh, oh. I'm just going to take a guess, boop. Right. Uh, Miller High. Oh, 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 starts with an M and it is something high. So M something high. Oh, right, Victoria. Michelle High is it? I don't know. No, do we, anybody get a lasting question, like answer? No, it's yeah. Moordale High. Oh, I know. I'll not, not guess that, I'll be honest. <laughs> I know, it's, it's annoying though, because I was like, it's Defo's written somewhere. Like, getting the Defo speak about it. <laughs> right, okay. So, CJ, question for you. What time uh, are new series and episodes normally released in the UK? Uh, midnight. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Me? Right, Victoria? 7 p.m. Oh, no, 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 it's not that. Eight. Right. Um, 6 p.m. No, no, no. no. Oh. Uh, do you want a last guess? 9 p.m. No, it's not at night. <laughs> oh, are you saying it sounded like you were saying Victoria was close? Me. 7 a.m. <laughs> So close, 8am. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, Never awake at that time. No, definitely not. <laughs> no. <laughs> doesn't exist to me. Right, so we're back to Victoria. So what is the name of the organisation funded by Carol Baskin from the Tiger King? I'll, I'll pass. I have never seen that good king. You're too busy making books and lot of bounding to watch it as it is. Boop, boop. Right, okay, boop. It's Big Cat Rescue. Yes! Victoria, <laughs> <laughs> we need to up our game. <laughs> see, when, oh. see when I finished that, I was like, CJ just gone. <laughs> <laughs> like, like this. <laughs> right. So, Emily, this one's for you. What is the name of the fictional town in Indiana, which is the setting for Stranger Things? Never seen Stranger Things. Neither. It's a type of bird. I can't remember. It's a type of bird, if that helps. Um, a type of bird. Did you say it was a type of bird? Yeah. Um, but then, but like a wee extra bit on, but I would give Ravendale. Oh, <laughs> no, but that was that's a that was a good one. <laughs> I'll make a show with it. <laughs> right? Are you just gonna beep in or bop in or me in? But right, uh, it's Hawkins. Yes, well done. <laughs> Did you just search it up? No. Did you cheat? <laughs> I don't cheat. Stick your tongue out. <laughs> right, it's no black. It's lying. <laughs> you, you're on fire. I, like, know. <laughs> I need to start watching shows again. <laughs> I, I remember that at the last minute. <laughs> right, okay, question six. So this is for you, CJ. Better Call Saul is a spin off from which US TV series? Uh, Breaking Bad. Yes! Woohoo! <laughs> Would you use that one? This is horrendous. How bad we're looking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Was it bad how much I know about Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> right, Victoria, mm-hmm. what is the name of Tony Ricky Gervais? This is late wife in afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> not me we're not watching anything like this um I'll, I'll pass i don't i haven't watched that <laughs> eh, no it's idea. A f- the same name as bart simpson's sister beep <laughs> lisa <laughs> yay yay, <we're> going. <laughs> yay <Emily. laughs> right okay so I think it might be a tie, you know. <laughs> but we've got we've got a wee extra question, you know, just in case we're gonna pull it out the bag somehow. <laughs> so this is for anybody, right? So you can beat Bob and me in. <laughs> so who asked us only to keep items which spark joy in our life on our Netflix series tidying up with <laughs> This Mary Kondo. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Never even seen it, just seen all the memes. Just, yeah. <laughs> just all the memes. So the person who's completed Netflix is <laughs> <laughs> uh, CJ. Woo! <laughs> well done. Oh, that was so funny. When I was doing them, I was like, right, I know the answer to this. And then I would like try and answer it myself before like I seen the answer. <laughs> I was waiting for like a question about vampire diaries and I was like, okay, I'm here for this. <laughs> like I have all the answers. <laughs> well, I can't thank you enough for coming on and I hope these won't be strangers. I hope these will come on again and tell us more about what you are getting up to. And mm-hmm. um, definitely I want the Etsy link so I can buy some definitely and keep us posted on your next kind of adventures. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in and listening to us. We'll just repeat our social medias. So Facebook, it's Kelly Youth Complex. Twitter, it's Youth Complex CYC. Instagram, it's Youth underscore Complex. TikTok is Kelly Youth Complex. And email is CYCYouthTeam at gmail.com. If you've got any suggestions on what the challenges you want for me and Lee to do, just send us a wee message. Um, but keep post, keep your eyes on the social media for us going live uh, this week for this week's challenge of bogeys. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for having me.